Honourable members, does any member wish to give a message of omission? Honourable Kodli, what is the point of order? Check, I want to check if we, the House forms quorum, and that alone excluding the opposition parties. Because it can be that we are here wake, waiting for the ANC members, whilst they are absent sleeping. <laughs> Chair? Yeah. Chairperson? I don't know if Honorable Ntebe wants to chair. He fails to weep, now he wants to chair. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable Koni? Am I protected, Chair? You are protected, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay, please take your seat. Okay, we will continue with the uh, work of the day because the house does form quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, honorable members, does anyone wish to? Honorable Kony, Honorable Kony, please order. Okay. Does anyone wish to give a notice of a motion? Uh, I see the honorable. Let me start this side. Honorable Poblat, Honorable Prince, and then Honorable Magwebu, Magwebu, and Shaka. In that order. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. On behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby wish to move that at the next sitting, this House debates the impact of state capture and corruption on the South African economy and job creation. I so move. Thank you. Honorable uh, Prince. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I hereby move on behalf of the African National Congress. Please speak to the mic, ma. I hereby move on behalf of the African National Congress, uh, the motion without notice, one, notice okay. on Honorable, Honorable Prince, on, on order, Honorable Prince, my apology. We are still on the notice of the motion. Without notice, sorry. Oh, please. Without notice, sorry. Okay, it's my fault. take your seat then. Thank you. Take your seat, ma. We, we'll call you when we arrive on the motion without notices. Honorable Isaac. Chairperson, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Chairperson, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby wish to move that at its next sitting, this House debates municipalities increasing liability to generate revenue, as is exasperated by the staggering ESCOM debts they face nationally, resulting in the faltering of the municipalities on contractual agreements with service providers throughout the country. I so move. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Makwebo. On behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby wish to move that at this next sitting that this House notes that on Monday night, the 2nd of October, a student was raped at Nelson Mandela University in the Eastern Cape inside the computer lab on the university campus. That this house further notes that this is not the first incident of the snake at this university, and that this house calls for an investigation into all rape and other sexual crime offenses on all university campuses by the Minister of Police, and for him to table his findings in the relevant select committee of the National Council of Provinces. Chairperson, I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Makwebu. Honorable Kayla. Chairperson, I hereby move on behalf of the United Democratic Movement that the House knows that the majority of, of employed and retired South Africans are beneficiaries of uh, provident fund and pension funds. 
that on a retirement, some of them, some of the financial institutions do not inform that there are many good them. It's so much that some of them died in object poverty. Believing that much, or much more could be done to educate our people, particularly the pensioners about pensions investment and beneficiation, as well as the relevant process of paying before they, are, they retire. Calls on the Department of Labor to consider rolling out an education program in this matter so that the beneficiaries are fully equipped to benefit and mitigate possible abuse of their investment. Results that the government must take necessary steps to correct the situation, thus restoring the dignity and respect of our people. I yet, I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Gaila. You were the last one. We are now uh, moving to the motion without notice, of which the Honorable Ellen, Honorable Prince, you will be the first one on this one. Chairperson, I hereby move on behalf of the African National Congress uh, the, the motion without notice. One, notes with utmost concern the controversial sale of five of Cape Town's 16 hectares prime coastal land between Clifton and Camps Bay. Two further notes that the prime land was sold to property developer Toby Maynard, who is a close friend of the son of the mayor of Cape Town, Patricia de Lille, Standard. and submitted Standard. an unsolicited proposal for the site as far back as December 2013. And three, now take, takes on this opportunity to call on the people of Cape Town to use this 20 day, 21 days period to rigorously, rigor, rigorously object to this controversial sale of public property to benefit family, friends, and politicians. I so move. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, hon Honorable Prince. Honorable, honorable members, uh, you are so many, as long as you know that we are within our 20 minutes. Honorable Mlambo. Thank you very much, Honorable Isaac. Uh, honorable members, can I check if ever the... Thank you very much, Honorable Julius. Honorable members, can I check if ever the honorable members uh, agree or object to the motion without notice? It's agreed to, okay. The honorable number, you are the next one. Uh, thank you very much, uh, House Chair. On behalf of the African National Congress, I hereby move without notice that the Council notes with great disgust that the DA de decided to place Cape Town Mayor Patricia Delil and a member of her executive, J.P. Smith, on special leave from DA activities in the Cape Town Metro instead of dealing with the actual problem being the irregular use of public funds by Mayor Delil in her house security upgrades. Two, also notes that again the DA demonstrates its arrogance and undermines the citizens of Cape Town where this decision shows that the DA is bigger and important than the people. Three, instead of putting the culprits on special leave from the council where the crime of corruption has been committed, it decides to treat them with soft gloves. Four, further notes that the shutting down of the city of Cape Town Special Investigation Unit and the refusal to accept any evidence pertaining Mayor Delil irregular use of public fund is clearly indicative of the DA not willing to walk the walk in outrooting corruption that encourages the councils they are in charge of. Number five, therefore, call upon DA to come clean, investigate the allegations against Mayor Delil and put both of them on special leave to allow the smooth running of the investigation. Okay. I so move. Thank you, Honorable Mlambo. Is there order, Honorable Members? Is there an objection? 
in light of the objection, the motion may not be proceeded with. The motion without notice will now become a notice of a motion. Uh, Tablanche, Honorable Tablanche. Honorable Tablanche. Thank you, Chairperson. A uh, motion without notice, Honorable Chairperson, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby wish to move without notice that this House conveys its appreciation to <coughs> Business Leadership South Africa for its stance against state capture on Wednesday, the 27th of September this year. This move will certainly strengthen the wave of resistance against <coughs> state capture and corruption. I so move. Thank you. Uh, is there an objection? The motion is agreed to in terms of Section 65 of our Constitution. The Honorable Member Lucima Bena. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. On behalf of African National Congress, I hereby raise a move without notice, uh, note that sim uh, note with sympathy and, and recognition for former ANC Youth League Secretary General Simbiso Makaka, who died on the 4th and laid to rest on the 26th last month. The second one, I also note that the, the scumbled to injury resulting from the 15 gunshot wounds in drive by shooting along with two fellow Umzumkulu councillor Jabum Zizi and Nontikelolo Mafa outside a general dealer in the southern KwaZulu Natal town after attending a council meeting. Three, Comrade Cindy Somakaka proved to, to be a loyal to the movement even after the disbandment of the structure he led in 2012. And different political tests in that. And that earned him being elected as a peer councillor in Umzumkulu municipality. The last one. In him, the nation has been robbed of one of its prospects our sincerely gratitude and sympathy to his family and friends on the loss. May his fighting spirit rest in peace. I so move. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Mabena. Is there an objection, Honorable Members? The motion is agreed to in terms of Section 65 of the Constitution. The Honorable Member Faber. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Chair, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby wish to move a motion without notice that we express our deepest sympathy to the families and friends of more than 50 people who were killed in Las Vegas, United States of America, at the music festival. The deadliest mass shooting in the U.S. history. More than 525 people were injured or wounded as concert goers ran for their lives. We condemn these acts of mass murder in the strongest manner. I so move. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any objection on the motion? Then the motion is, uh, is agreed to. In terms of section 65 of the Constitution, the Honorable Member De Beer. On behalf of the ANC, Honorable Chair, I hereby move the Council notes with utmost appreciation the reports that South Africa's state-owned freight logistics group Transnet will invest an additional 84 billion rand over the next three years to increase the capacity at ports and railway lines. Further notes that this enormous investment is part of government's commitment to address the long years of apartheid-skewed infrastructure investment and to meet the demands of a growing economy and population. Takes this op opportunity to welcome this decisive economic intervention and calls on government to ensure that black business suppliers, women, and youth play an active role in many of these projects. I so move. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Honorable Debier. Is there any objection on the motion? In light of the objection, the motion may not be proceeded with. The motion without notice will now become a notice of a motion. The Honorable Member Kaola. Order, Honorable Kodi. Kaola, the Slalo Sempegile. A Kameni de Kembo in Kata and Kululego. Gedulisa les Paramiso. Esnina Sequaiso. Uguba Lenzu Eshon Pegile. Equasi El Kuli Shombe. Ekomo Papule Kola Kuala. Umparati or Maspala. Pasen Dumeni. Ewa Tinilis Tatu. Spundazi Sombus of course. Bawazulu Natal. 
ngokuzikhethwa la ngubunyoni ngo kethwe ni lokutibiela obolu nga sonto ili jlule ngo le stratu mshazi nga mashuma mabili ni skombi sa kumandulu kulo lu kethwe ikwe mbli nkata ya nkulego li zilele ya mashanga li katulisa ikwe mbli ka kongolosi okta ito ili uguba na la baba besa sele njine vuta malangabi ya national freedom party sebu iskati so uguba basa nzangaya tela babu ili kaya ngoba hai aksa sele luto I AFP ikoshe ama pesenti angu 53, AMC angu 43, IEFF angu 4. Aba anye bakoshe ama pesenti anga kwa azu kupalega nukubizega nje ngoba ekalisa ngo ziro bani nga kulu. Si lindu, si bongela umea umbata kumasupala wa sendu meni neke mbulonke lenkata nkulego ngomusebe nzo umuse. Kanye na make mbuonke abe nyundi sana ngo keto olube nukutula. Thank you very much, Honorable Kaula. Is there any objection on the motion? Thank you very much. The motion is agreed to in terms of Section 65 of the Constitution. The Honorable Member Kony. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I hereby rise on behalf of the EFF that the House note that in five days' time on the 10th of October this month, it will be 50 years since one of the greatest revolutionaries in the history of mankind was killed. Ernesto Rafael Guevara, was also known as Che, was killed by the fascist government of Bolivia by, with the help of the CIA. The contribution that Che made towards the total liberation of all humanity from the oppression and exploitation of capitalism can never be overlooked. He was a remarkable man who combined a theoretical understanding of exploitative nature of capitalism with a very practical approach on how capitalism can be defeated and socialism built. This he did in Cuba to great success, but he did not stop there. After serving in the cabinet of Fidel Castro, he did not allow the comforts of power to trap him, like what we see in South Africa today, but went to Bolivia, the DRC, and many other countries to advance the socialist revolution. This he did and great cost to his personal well-being as he was not able to see his family and lived under harsh conditions like every other guerrilla. He was, an, he was and continues to be an example of what a revolutionary is. It is why we honor him today and will continue the struggle by fulfilling our generational mission of economic freedom in our lifetime for Africa Order, and the oppressed Bonnie. world. Order, I so move. Order, Honorable Member. Uh, your time has expired. Your motion will now become notice of a motion and will be printed in full in the next order paper. The Honorable Member Nguita. Honorable Member, please take your seat. What is your point of order? I noticed that as you are ruling on my motion, you are smiling like you are celebrating that it was not captured. That is not a but point of order. the fact is, my point is made. Thank you. That is not a point of order, Honorable Kony. Actually, you are totally out of order because I'm not smiling. I'm serious with the work. Over to you, Magnita. Th thank you very much. Uh, you should be smiling because it's claiming Kovar. I hereby move a motion without notice as an African National Congress to note with utmost shock and utter dismay the brutal rape of students at Nelson Mandela uh, on Monday, 3rd October. Further note that the student was stabbed in the second campus avenue in university because he didn't have the cell phone we take then this opportunity to condemn the harshest possible terms, the senseless and horrendous crime happened in the university. The Honorable Nguita, and call on Honorable, Nelson Mandela Honorable Nguita, please take your seat. The Honorable Julius is standing. What, why are you standing on your Thank feet? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think the member didn't listen that we dealt with that motion already. Oh, it's okay. a repeat. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let, let's then continue. If ever the motion has been dealt with, then I have to move to the Honorable Member Pakis. 
Chair, I stand to pay tribute to General Vo Guyen GM, the, who died on the, on the 4th of October 2013. The General Louis N have been universally considered the greatest man in history for his indomitable service to the Vietnamese Revolution, the man of intelligence, a revolutionary who directed and commanded the revolutionary forces under the leadership of the Communist Party of Vietnam. Against the imperialist aggression, he pulverized the French forces, humiliated the Americans, respectively, with a supreme objective to defend the independence of the homeland and liberation of the Vietnamese. His immortal ways says, I quote, if the nation is determined to stand up, it is strong. We can put the past behind us, but we cannot completely forget it, close quote. This is the longest and brutalized fighting battle defoliant for Vietnamese, fired by fear of communist venom, which signified the human resilience that had outwitted and outperformed gun power. General Jieb, the former commander of the former commander in chief of, of, of the Vietnam Army, and served as a deputy prime minister and defense minister since reunification. In addition, the deputy chairperson of the Council of Ministers, a diminutive and debt general, the master of motivation and moral boost, a military strategist who mastered the application of the guerrilla warfare principle with tenacity and inordinate confidence and revolutionary patience, he led the resistance the against the position and foisted culture. Honorable Thank you. Uh, your, your, your time was expired when I was calling on your name. So your motion will now become notice of a motion and will be printed in full on the next order paper. Why are you standing, Honorable Julius? Point of order, uh, what is Deputy the point Chair, of order? I was so wondering whether the NDZ faction will object to that motion. Of you are the one who is out of order. Uh, can I now call on the Honorable Hutton? Thank you, Honorable Chair. I thought that when you winked at me initially, uh, you afterwards forgot me. Mm -mm, I won't forget you. I know all of you, Honorable Members. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I hereby move without notice that this House condemns the erection of the Jacob Zuma capture site monument, which was officially opened by the President yesterday at Groot Mariku in the Northwest. Although the Northwest Premier Supramang Pelu heeded to, to the call of the DA not to erect a six meter tall statue of the President, and then downscale the project to a monument, it should still be regarded, regarded as fruitless and wasteful expenditure. In a community where there are regularly protests surrounding the lack of water by people who do not have access to water, this monument will, monument will be remembered for the physical manifestation of state capture in South Africa, in which President Jacob Zuma plays a pivotal role. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Hutton. Is there an objection? In light of the objection, the motion may not be proceeded with. The motion without notice will now become notice of a motion. The Honorable Member Gayla. I hereby move without notice on behalf of the United Democratic Order, Commission. Honorable Members. That the House knows that. Me at the House Order, notes Honorable in many Kony. instances, historically disadvantaged communities and municipalities frequently discontinue services like provision of water and electricity and other services. Further notes that disruption of services is destructive, exorbitant of daily livelihood of impoverished people. Discussion that these communities are given the same respect, are not given the same respect as the to advantage upper class communities, believing that there should be equality in enjoyment and supply of municipal services in every municipality for all citizens. Moves that are after the next sitting debates the most equitable, effective, and efficient method of service delivery. I hereby move. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any objection? Thank you, the Honorable Member Mtimia. Thank you, 
not. I received a notice from the table. Anyhow, there's no problem. We'll pass. Uh, the Honourable Member Samka. Thank you, Honourable Chairperson. I hereby move without notice on behalf of the a ANC that the Council notes with utmost shock and utter dismay the brutality and senseless the mass killing of 11 people in the Margana informal settlement in Inyanga in Cape Town, Western Cape Police last Friday night. Further notes that these senseless killings follow the brutal murder of seven more people few weeks ago. Acknowledge that the rate of killings in Inyanga, which is regarded as South Africa's murder capital, requires a decisive battle that will rid the streets of Nyanga of the heartless criminals who show no regard of the law and human life. <coughs> Take this opportunity to welcome the decisive intervention of the Minister of Police to ensure that the people of Nyanga are not held in ransom by heartless criminals and conveys its profound condolences to all the families who have lost their loved ones, who have lost their loved ones, and reassures them that as the voice of the people of South Africa, we will continue to use, to use whatever platform in our parliament to stand on the shoulders of our nation to call, the, to call for the decisive action to bring peace in Nyanga. I so move, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Samga. Is there any objection, Honorable Members? The motion is agreed to in terms of Section 65 of the Constitution. The Honorable Member Isaac. Honorable Chairperson, I am indeed grateful for the opportunity. On behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I move without notice that this House notes that the Emma Lathleni local municipality in Pumalanga spent 2.1 million rand on a private security company, Track Optimum International, in order to protect the private residence of Executive Mayor Councillor Lindiwe in Charlie Charlie in Polo in Pola Emma Lathleni for 29 days only, Chairperson. According to documents in the DA's position, which is attached to this motion, Chair. The director of this company is also the director of Mzanzi Guarding and Events CC, the company that was paid 20 million run in 2014 to protect the municipal manager Theo van Fieren and, of course, other senior staff in Emalathleni. In light of Emalathleni's current financial woes, Chairperson, which are, of course, in complete disarray, also owing an accumulated debt now of 1 billion rand to ESCOM that this House calls upon the Auditor General to urgently investigate the Emalathleni local municipality's finances and report its findings to the relevant select committee in this August House, the National Council of Prov Provinces. In conclusion, therefore, Chairperson, in a country where many people are currently resorting to feeding their children sugar water, it is deplorable that for the mayor to use public money for her own benefit instead of the much needed service delivery that it was meant for. I so move. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Isaac. On order, Honorable Members, is there any objection? In light of the objection, the motion may not be proceeded with. The motion without notice will now become a notice of a motion. Yes. Order, order, Honorable Isaac, order. Honorable members, Honorable Kony, Honorable Isaac, point of order. Uh, can I check with the Honorable members if are there any further motion without notice? Hon Honorable Isaac, Honorable Isaac, how can you do that? Okay, you still have, okay, the Honorable Member Makwebu, then you'll be the next one, Honorable Chabanku. Over to you, Honorable Makwebu. Honorable Chairperson, fellow South Africans, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, I move without notice that this House notes that 
On Wednesday, the 4th of October, 2017, the driver of a vehicle tried to force his entry onto the premises of Nelson Mandela University during the student protest that was taking place. He fired gunshots at the students and sped off. The K-9 police unit of Port Elizabeth responded promptly and chased the vehicle along Settlers Way before arresting the suspect and bringing him to book. This House congratulates the K-9 police unit of Port Elizabeth for their swift action and the arrest that they effected and wish them more success in the execution of their duties to ensure the safety of our students in our institutions of learning. I so move. Thank you, Honorable Chavang. Maguibu, is there any objection? The motion is agreed to. Honorable Chavangu. Thank you, Chairperson. I hereby rise on behalf of EFF to commend Parliament and all the other institutions that decided to cut trees with KPMG South Africa. KPMG must fall. I recognize that KPMG helped Gupta-led syndicate to loot state resources, collapse SARS capacity, and costed South Africa economy millions of jobs. I raise extreme concern about the decision of Auditor, uh, Auditor General South Africa failure to cut ties with KPMG South Africa. I appreciate that failure by AXA to cut ties with KMG will bring into questions reporting of all government expenditure and possibly damage the image, credibility, and mandate of AXA. I recognize investigation by independent regular board of auditors and call on this council to encourage all necessary investigation that must be conducted. Lastly, I call on companies, companies state-owned entities and organizations to cut ties with KMG as soon as possible. I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Chabangu. Is there any objection, Honorable Members? The motion is agreed to. Thank you very much. Uh, order, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, we, are, we now come to the subject of for discussion is printed on the order paper. Uh, I want to take this opportunity and welcome our Minister of Transport in the House and also the special delegates from legislature. Thank you very much. I see a hand. What is the point of order, sir? Chairperson, um, my name is um, Cameron Dugmore. I'm a member of the Western Cape Legislature. Yesterday, um, and I'd like to ask the messenger to give this um, notice to you, I received an email indicating that um, I was on the speakers list for today. I prepared myself um, for, for today's debate, which is a critical debate around reliable and safe passenger rail transport. I was then contacted, and that's why I really don't want to create any embarrassment for the chief whip um, um, of the ruling party. Um, I was then informed that the Democratic Alliance objected to me being a speaker at this, at, at this legislature today. This has never happened to me in the past. I've previously spoken either as um, a representative of the legislature or on behalf of the political party, the African National Congress. So... Um, Chairperson, I, you know, am prepared to abide by a ruling and not to disrupt um, this process further. But I think it's, if one looks at the Constitution of the Republic, um, you will see in uh, Clause 61, um, 4, it indicates that the legislature with the concurrence of the Premier and leaders of parties entitled to special delegates in the province's delegation must designate special delegates required from time to time from among the members. So what I would like, if you are able to clarify this, Chair, or if not to have an investigation, is whether the Premier of the Western Cape has actually intervened to block um, the African National Congress speaking here today, or what has the process been um, that I'm not allowed um, to actually participate in this debate? So... Um, I'm not sure whether you allow howling, Chairperson, but there is obviously the DA is howling no, 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 on the no, left no, here. No, 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 no. But I would like to 
to ask you um, um, to, if, if there is an explanation um, or failing an explanation now, to request your honorable office chair to investigate this matter because I was informed by the chief whip of the ANC in the legislature, um, Pierre Ace, um, already last week to be here as a speaker for the African National Congress. And I find it a complete violation of the most fundamental right in our constitution, which is freedom of speech, that it is the DA who are standing up here objecting as, and in fact, I'm also a member of the Transport and Public Works Committee in the legislature to actually speaking here today. I find this absolutely astounding. I will abide by your ruling, but I think the DA is clamping down on freedom of speech in this house. I've spoken here many times before. You're just a new boy. Order, honorable members. Honorable Kony. Aye. Honorable Faber. Order, order. The honorable member, honorable member, honorable Lovskahan, can you please take your seat? I'll recognize you. Uh, the honorable Dagmo. Uh, I know that is not in my competency because I don't compile the speaker's list. But let me allow me to to go and look further on the matter, and then I'll come back with the ruling thereafter. Uh, I've noticed the honorable member, Lawaskahan and Julius. I don't know if ever they still want to rise on the point of order. You're fine, okay. Uh, our, I was in the position to welcome the, the you would like to arise on a point of order or any point of debate because the matter is not in the position to be discussed, okay. unless if you rise on a different point of order. I would no, I would like to rise in the same point of order. Okay, and then I'm order member. I'm not going to allow you. Please take your seat. And I've already gone through the, the ruling. Hon Honorable Minister. Honorable Julius. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. As long as you're rising on a different yes. matter, Honorable Member. Yes, House Chairperson, you allowed the member for almost four minutes to state his case, and that belongs to the Chief Whip, and not the member to come and state his case here individually. Okay. That belongs to the Chief Whip, and I'm surprised that the Chief Whip didn't even stand up to address the matter, because that belongs in the office of the Chief Whip, and not the member, because otherwise I can also come and bring one of my members from Gauteng to come and say, why didn't you allow me to on the speaker? Honorable list? Julius, can I, you rule I, on that matter, Honorable please? Julius, Honorable Julius, I gave you an opportunity to speak, but you know, we've already done with that matter. I have ruled on the matter, and the matter does not deserve any discussion from any other member. Thank I you very much. Thank you very much. I have ruled on the matter. For four minutes. Uh, yes, uh, the Honourable Minister, I, I was welcoming also the members from the legislature, our special delegates, please feel free and participate in the House. Over to you, Honourable Minister, we now continue with the debate of the day. Thanks, uh, Chairperson, MECs, President, Chief Whip, members. Building a reliable and safe passenger rail transport in South Africa. Passenger rail as a mode of transport plays a critical role in the socio-economic development. Passenger rail services are designed to move large numbers of commuters simultaneously between destinations. Commuter rail services in particular make the work centers and central business districts accessible to the country's workforce, providing affordable transport at set time. Long and regional passenger rail services provide transport services to passengers over longer distances for purposes of traveling and tourism. The department has put in place a sound regulatory framework to ensure a safe and reliable passenger rail transport. The mandate of reliable passenger rail 
is uh, delivered by PRASA. PRASA is a wholly owned government public entity reporting to the Department of Transport. In South Africa, PRASA operates commuter rail services through Metro Rail, which currently transport 1.8 million passenger tri trips daily. The Metro Rail network covers more than 15% of South African rail network. PRASA plays a major role in reducing costs of living through affordable rail fares for people traveling to and from places of employment and effective public transport system that contributes to the movement of people, facilitate employment and labor force participation, thereby increasing commuter and passenger numbers and social demographics. Metro rail performance is very low with the average national train performance, reflected punctuality at 78.4% against a target of 85% and train cancellations at 8.8% against a target of 4%. Uh, a total of 284 train sets at 12 coach set configuration is required to provide the equivalent of the service capacity offered in 2008-2009. Currently, 216 train sets, which constitutes 76% of the 2008-2009 requirement, is available, with 55% of these train sets running at 8 to 10 coach set configuration. Service capacity has effectively reduced from 3,400 coaches in 2008-2009 to under 2,000 coaches currently in the system. The Western Cape is the most affected by declining capacity with number of coaches out of service due to fire as and damage. A total of 101 coaches have been lost due to fire since October 2015 with a value of over 300 million rand. A total of 80 to 100 coaches are vandalized per month nationally due to cable and equipment theft and vandalism in trains. The Houteng province has, however, managed train capacity and performance within the reasonable norms, achieving consecutive monthly improvement on trains performance since January 2017. Key services in KZN was at total collapse towards the end of May 2017, with only 26 train sets in operation against a requirement of 52 sets. While the wash away at the Umgobutwini um, due to adverse rainfall, affecting also the South Coast services during the same period. Through a special management intervention, the, <coughs> sorry, the regional technical team restored 12 train sets in three week period. The wash away has also been addressed as an emergency repair project and services in KZN has stabilized. The challenge in KZN is to sustain the reliability of the train sets and improve infrastructure quality. <coughs> PRASA is contributing to the reliable and safe passenger rail transport through a modernization program to the tune of 173 billion rand it includes a number of initiatives such as the refurbishment of the existing fleet, depot modernization and the signaling renewal program in Houteng, KZN and Western Cape region. These initiatives are correcting years of underinvestment in passenger rail in South Africa. To take the issue of investment in passenger rail to the next level, PRASA has commenced with its program of modernizing the commuter rail network in the country. The acquisition of new rail stock, I mean rolling stock, thanks, to replace the aging fleet, accommodate the growth in passenger numbers, improve passenger safety and energy efficiency is a critical component of the modernization program and part of process mandate. The new fleet of rolling stock will be introduced into 10 year cycles while the existing fleet is being phased out new depots with the necessary equipment to maintain modern fleet will be built. 
and existing depots retained to maintain the existing fleet. The rolling stock fleet renewal program is a catalyst for transformation of metro rail services and public transport as a whole, while the urgent challenge to improve the passenger services remain primary. The program has also been designed to achieve a number of key uh, government objectives, such as the delivery of quality services to citizens, revitalization of South Africa's rail engineering industry through local manufacturing, and ensuring a local content, 65% minimum local content, as part of government's industrial policy action plan. PRASA has made considerable progress to achieving this objective with the Gibela Rail Transport uh, Consortium, appointed to supply 3,600 new metro rail coaches at a cost of amounting to 57 billion rand over a 10-year period. The program aims to create 65,000 direct and indirect jobs. Total number of jobs created today is 1,080. 261 jobs are in manufacturing, 65 in maintenance, and 754 in construction. The targeted groups in terms of jobs are youth, uh, women, local SMEs. Uh, of course, women and youth are in the majority. PRASA has been provisionally accepting new trains from December 2016, and to date, no delays has been experienced. A total number of 20 trains have been received by PRASA. On 9 May 2017, President Zuma launched the new trains and handed them over to PRASA, and PRASA launched the race service in Pinasport, Pretoria, Corridor, where only new trains are being utilized for operations. The rolling stock fleet renewal program has now entered its most exciting phase with the construction of the local factory, which is progressing very well. In making sure that uh, rail passenger transport is accessible to the majority of South Africans, a number of provincial rail extensions are underway, Chairperson. The following are the initiatives in the Western Cape, the Blue Downs extensions to provide Blue Downs and surrounding areas with access to rail transport, improve rail services and connectivity between Belleville and the Metro Southeast, and ease congestion on existing network, new 10 kilometer line and three stations. Cape Town International Rail Link will provide rail connectivity to the airport the new four-kilometer link between the existing railway line and the airport ensures that existing infrastructure is used optimally and improves the reach and accessibility of the rail network. We also have a stabilization intervention programs, Chairperson, to recover the 20 train set in 12 months at the rate of 12 of two sets uh, through special in-house and contracted uh, capacity reduce the short configured sets from 86% to 50% over uh, 18 months. Also cooperate with SAPS, provincial, and as well as the uh, city uh, security to make sure that we have got a city, I mean a security plan. In Houting, we have the Mloto Rail Corridor for providing a modern technology, multimodal integrated transport system to commuters between Limpopo, Pumalanga, and Gauteng, that is Tuan. In Gauteng, again, the Itwata Rail Extension aims to extend the existing line and services eastwards from the terminal station at Deviton into the areas of Krisani, Itwata, and Nobsfontein uh, face almost 10 kilometers with uh, eight stations. We are going to spend 2.5 billion rand on the Itwato Deviton Rail Extension. We also have a, I mean, a stabilization intervention program in that area. In KwaZulu Natal, uh, we have to increase and sustain the additional 12 train sets with spares and in house uh, repairs, address the transnet uh, dependencies through interface agreement and penalty regime, increase the security contingent in conjunction with uh, SAPS. Honorable Chairperson, in the Eastern Cape, 
we have the program or the project called the Motherwell Rail Link Extension, which will enhance the role of rail in Nelson Mandela Bay with 15,000 to 20,000 daily passengers in the short term and increasing to 35,000 daily passengers by 2020. The development of the full loop becomes more attractive in the medium long term uh, as the KUKA uh, development has reached greater uh, density. In terms of the stabilization program, is the confirmation of locomotive support from Transnet or alternative lease arrangement for locomotives. In terms of Houting, we are working together with the province of Houting, also complemented by the Houtrain Management Agency, which was established as a Houtrain, I mean Houting Provincial Government Entity to manage the public-private partnership concession agreement between the Houting Provincial Government and the concessionaire for the Houting uh, uh, rail uh, link. The Houting rapid rail link is clearly different from the other rail networks in South Africa in that it is currently the only services offered on standard gauge. The Houting rapid rail link is designed to operate profitably and serves commuters traveling between Pretoria, Johannesburg, and the OR Tambo International Airport. We also have the Rail Safety Regulator Chairperson, which has been established in terms of the National Rail Safety Regulator Act 2002 to oversee, promote, monitor, and enforce rail safety within the Republic of South Africa. And the Rail Safety Regulator, through its vision, aspires to achieve zero outcurrents in the railway environment its mission is to oversee and promote rail safety operations through appropriate support, monitoring, and enforcement guided by the enabling regulatory framework. Honorable Chairperson, as this government, we have a clear program to recapitalize and modernize the rail services in South Africa to make sure that our rail services is reliable and safe. We are also developing the national rail policy, which is going to cabinet not so long. As ANC government, we have the plans to improve the rail services in South Africa. We are moving South Africa forward. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. I shall now call on the Honorable Chai, Chairperson of Select Committee on economic development. Uh, Honorable House uh, Chairperson, uh, Minister of Transport, uh, Honorable Chief Whip, Honorable Members and uh, Special Delegates, distinguished guests, fellow South Africans. The launch of the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, PRASA, in March 2009, brought about a new era in passenger rail transport. PRASA was created out of a decision by cabinet that saw a need to consolidate the former South African Rail Commuter Corporation, Metro Rail, Sosolosa Mail, Autopex, and other entities into one agency. The cabinet's vision was that PRASA, as an implementation arm of the National Department of Transport, would offer an integrated passenger services that would prioritize customer needs, provide better mobility and accessibility to masses of South African population in need of safe and affordable transport. The ANC made a commitment to the people of South Africa in 2014 that in the current term of government, world-class passenger trains will be introduced with the new modern coaches to replace outdated trains, bringing safety and comfort to the millions of commuters. In addition, government committed to work towards opening new passenger railway lines to connect our people in new human settlements, rural areas and township. Government's undertaking to improve our public transport system is also aimed at creating many new jobs and contributing to skills development. 
as locomotives and trains will be manufactured and assembled in South Africa. The mandate of Prasa is a state-owned uh, enterprise. Prasa has a strategic role to play in terms of fulfilling the broader objectives of the development of state that we are building. Within the, full, within the fulfilling the broader objectives of the development of state, within the framework of this development of state, the SOEs are not created to maximize profit or incur losses. Rather, their existence is for the purposes of driving the agenda of development of our people. In other words, Prasa must fulfill a dual mandate, which entails achieving a balance between the required level of self-funding and undertaking developmental projects. As a public entity reporting to the Minister of Transport, Prasa's main responsibility is to deliver commuter rail services in the metropolitan areas of South Africa, a long distance in the city rail services. With regard to the operational challenges, uh, such as the decline in fit availability, the National Development Plan identified that South Africa needs reliable, economical, and smooth flowing corridors linking its various modes of transport, roads, rail, air, seaports, and pipelines. These corridors are dominated by old railway technology that is prone to malfunction and poor intermodal linkages. The, pass the passenger rail system in our country is faced with enormous operational challenges characterized primarily by the decline in field av availability. Brasa has bought the passenger train from Gibela Rail Transport Consortium to the value of 57 billion, which amounted to 600 trains. Brasa had then bought 88 locomotives from Swifambo Rail Leasing before the rent took a knock and the agency ended up taking 70 instead. Brasa management had decided to take 70 instead of paying for extra 18 locomotives because it had found no scientific determination on how the decision to buy, to buy 88 had been arrived at. With regard to the lifespan for the entire railway system, the condition of a station facility that had been degenerating at a much faster rate than the other portfolio stock due to an increased rate in vandalism and theft. As a result, security has in 2017-2018 financial year been included as one of the most crucial services. The maintenance of facilities is characterized by provision of cleaning and hygiene services, general waste management, security, repairs and maintenance. The location of these facilities and the user behavior has a direct impact on facility lifespan and conditions. With regard to the infrastructure technology and operating system, one of the policy difficulties confronting Prasa is the fact that it uses Transnet's rail infrastructure. Since Transnet has become a commercial company, it started charging Prasa for the use of its infrastructure at a rate of 800 million a year. This led to Prasa owing Transnet billions of rents in unpaid debts. This is a matter that requires political intervention by parliament and the executive. The rail industry is a key component of any functioning industrial, industrial economy. It is an important component in the logistics chain that is in the, integral to our economy. It is critical to the future of South Africa and our industrialization. However, investment spending in South Africa fell from an average of 30% of GDP in the early 1980s to about 16% of GDP by early 2000. Public infrastructure spending is also at a low level by historical standards. In effect, South Africa has missed a generation of capital investment in public uh, infrastructure. Brasa's current procurement of 600 uh, sets, uh, coupled with rail industrialization, contractual obligation, are a key part of government's program to re-industrialize the economy. However, sustainability of the industry requires that it does not only rely on demand from South Africa, but it should also have export potential. Hence, Prasa's reindustrialization plan 
is premised on restoring the one dominant role of the rail manufacturing Gauteng uh, East Rand, a role that has been taken over by a service sector which become the major contributor to the regional economy in the Ekuruleni Metro Municipality. In August of this year, Prasa has announced that about 1,500 people will be permanently employed at their 1 billion local train manufacturing plant at, Dan at Dano Tapak in the city of Ekuruleni. The industrialization plan, which includes improved support for and responsiveness to the manufacturing enterprises and upgraded infrastructure networks. The acquisition of the new rolling stock has been established to increase the proportion of a number of the train originating from South Africa and achieve government's local content target of 65% within 10 years. The creation of a sustainable and competitive local rolling stock manufacturing sector. A strong focus on job creation and job retention. The transfer and development of, related, uh, of rail and related skills to our workers. Meaningful black contractor development and improved safety and reliability of procured rolling stock. In line with the NDP's key focus areas and planning priorities of creating workable urban transit solution. Government has identified the need to renew commuter rail fleet. Government has adopted a program of modernizing the rail system. This entailed primarily the investment program of 173 billion over 10 years for the rolling stock fleet renewal, signaling technology and modernization of corridors and stations. Rail engineering is crucial in ensuring the availability, reliability, and safety, both the rolling stock and infrastructure. The engineering turnaround focuses on improving reliability, availability, predictability, and safety of the service. The rolling stock recovering plan aims to recover 798 coaches back into service to increase the number of coaches from the current 2,702 to 3,500 in 12 months. Brasa is committed to reducing signal signaling telecoms faults by 15% through procuring the services of the contractors in Gauteng, the region with the most dire uh, performance to supplement their internal maintenance capacity for points, uh, track circuits, signals, interlockings, cables and panels on the old signaling network, as well as upgrading signaling technology, for example, migrating from copper to optic fiber on the control system in all region, installing vandal-proof signal equipment, especially in the Western Cape. One of government's priorities is to address the challenges that workers and commuters who depend on our passenger rail transport have have been complaining about for a number of years. Lack of reliability and safety on the trains. Government's plan in, plans in the medium to long term will ensure that Prasa remains a leader in, pras, in passenger transport solution and that as a modern public entity, it delivers high quality passenger services in a safe and secure environment. The NTP knows that current Currently outdated malfunction prone railway technology and poor intermodal linkages dominate these corridors. In realizing the objectives outlined in the NTP, PRASA plays a crucial role in providing a suitable public transport solution that is safe, efficient, reliable, and cost effective. Every month, Metro, metro Rain loses 70 carriages due to fires and vandalism in Cape Town alone. At Maitland Station, there's a whole graveyard of burnout and vandalized train carriages. In August, two entire trains were set alight in Cape Town. As a result, Metro Rail is spending 500 million rands annually on service and recovery work related to breakdowns and vandalism. In most countries, this would be regarded as a national disaster or even elements of counter-revolution, which would require the mobilization of security classes and the whole society. 
with regard to the need to leverage on new rail investment and rail upgrades. Government needs to leverage the investment in rail upgrades, such as 19.5 billion earmarked for capital spending to upgrade existing infrastructure, which includes signaling system and 173 billion rands in new roads, uh, rail roaring stock over 10 years. Over medium term, Brasa aims to improve the reliability of rail services and increase rail passenger ridership. The Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Farmer. Honourable Chairperson, members, and Mr. Lovemore, or Mr. Doug Moore. Um, a reliable and safe passenger rail transportation system is, is a critical aspect of any society and the growth of its economy. Millions of South Africans rely on rail transport, and their safety is of utmost importance. Government encourages South Africans to make use of public transportation like trains, but considering the unreliability and safety aspects of public transport, it is yet to be a viable option for many South Africans. Factors such as availability and good maintenance of resources need also to be considered in determining the viability of our current systems. Safety signals and speed limits are often disobeyed, and train drivers are in many instances inexperienced or unskilled. That contributes to more than three quarters of the failure during the lifespan of our rolling stock assets. Further, the maintenance of the assets, keeping it in operational condition, play a large role in the reliability context. Reliability is of utmost importance to communities at this, as it has a direct impact on the lives of mostly the poor communities getting to work on time. To a commuter, a train arriving a few minutes late could mean being late for an interview or a job or even losing a job because of preserved lack of respect of punctuality. It could mean a student missing out on a critical information in lectures or even the inability to obtain critical social services due to lack of access. A case study was done on the reliability of rolling stock on Metro Rail, and it found that Metro Rail operates on aging fleet of trains, of which some have been in use since 1958. Metro Rail then take use of cancellation and delays as reliability measures for their fleet. Between 400,000 and 700,000 people uses trains for their fleet or for their daily transportation in Cape Town and are complaining daily for the inefficiencies of the Praza train system. Reliability has declined in such a way that the Western Cape can only operate at 60%. Trains break down with al without alternative transportation to help commuters to get to work and back. Because of this, many people have lost their jobs for not getting to work on time or at all. There are further no public announcement systems on trains to inform passengers when trains stop with problems. Passengers sit and wait in carriages for hours while signals are not working or due to breakdowns before being notified that they need to make alternative arrangements. <coughs> this creates a vulnerability where criminals use this opportunity to mug and assault commuters. An elderly male colleague of ours from the National Assembly recently needed to go to the doctor in Belleville and decided to take the metro train from Acacia Park station at the parliamentary village to commute to Belleville. On this 10 o'clock train, young gangsters start robbing the few passengers and were sitting where he was sitting in the coach. The members swiftly moved to the next coach and tried to get help from security. But the last coach was also quite empty, without any sign of security. As the train was close to nearby stop, he jumped from the slow-moving train to get away from the thugs. 
I went to investigate myself and took a few trips on some of the lines and was shocked not to be able to find any security officers on some of these trains. The next story on safety was when I took an overloaded metro train from Cape Town to Acacia Park Parliamentary Village on the Mulmember. You should try that. I saw plenty of commuters hanging between and out of train coaches as there was no more space available inside the train, as well as commuters taking free rides while jumping off before entering stations and thus avoiding to pay. I went to the security personnel standing on the platform and asked if they saw this violation. The answer was shocking to me as the two guards told me that the commuters tease or threaten them. When they report these incidents, the high ranks do nothing about it. The security officers deployed on the trains and stations is by far too little and mostly these guards are also untrained. The so-called rapid rail police unit is spread thin and far apart and have almost no influence on criminals and the activities on the trains. Vandals throw trains with stones and carriages are burned. All of which uh, could be... Sorry, Honourable Father. Honourable Members, you know you're not allowed to drown the speaker. Honourable Mtimi. Continue, Honourable Father. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I don't take him serious at all, so it's not a problem. All of which could be prevented if there were adequate security or police available. Millions of rands damage take place regularly. Just hop on the metro train from Cape Town to Strand and you will be shocked. Yes, Mr. Mutamuni, you can go and have a look, but you never drive train. Honorable Faber. Just Honorable hop Faber. on the metro train. Honorable Faber, you know the rules does not allow you to address Honorable Mutamuni. Through you, Chairperson, some of the members should take the train and get this shocking experience. By driving past 101 burnt carriages that you will see on the way, on the way out of Cape Town Station, the damages surpasses 300 million to date. Now, speaking on commuters on the tra trains, you will understand their fear of gangs boarding the trains, robbing passengers, and being stabbed or cut by knives on a trip. Chairperson, sorry, this honorable member is disbehaving. Can you please protect me? Honorable Mtimi, the honorable father is protected. Please. Thank you, honorable chair. People are being stabbed and there is no security to protect these passengers or serve as a deterrent. Workers unions asked Transnet more than 10 years ago that train drivers are refreshed take refresher courses and undergo competency tests. Regular changing of shifts to prevent accidents due to fatigue, that various railway crossings are visible and completed, and there should be stricter access control that railway police be instituted. Further, it is clear that the aged railway lines, our train routes are not maintained, as we saw when a new locomotive, locomotive rolled off a straight line near Kimberley in my constituency. Now, while we acknowledge that crime plays a role and has a negative impact on railway infrastructure, with the thefts of rails, sleepers, and cables leading to derailments, we have a duty to ensure the continuous maintenance of trains and safety of commuters. It is thus clear that Barasa, governed by the national ANC-run government, is ineffective in providing passenger rail transport to our community's needs. The Metro Passenger Rail Transportation should be privatized and or run by cities and provinces themselves. We cannot continue to allow PRASA to steal education and job opportunities from commuters due to their own if inefficiencies, lack of experts, uh, expertise and lack of empathy for, our, for the direct impact the operations have on communities' lives. Our communities deserve better. I thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Faber. I shall now call on the, thank you, the Honorable Demisa Eastern Cape Chairperson for health. Uh, Honorable Demisa, before you continue, can I ask you to take a seat a little bit? Order, Honorable Members. Honorable Julius, Gautam Province, seat this side. 
Yes, you can, you can come and occupy your seat. Honorable members, I want to make an announcement. Uh, noticing that the other presiding officers are not in the house, they are busy with the program of parliament somewhere, and the Honorable Deputy Chair is off sick. He's been admitted in the hospital. So with the powers invested in me, I'm going to request the Chief of the Council to come and relieve me and we continue with the business of the day. Over to you. Over to you, Chairperson. You can take, your, take the podium. Is that a point of order, Honorable Isaac? Honorable Chair, sorry, no, with due respect to the speaker at the podium, uh, I'm sitting behind Honorable Muti Munia, and I think he needs to get to the emergency clinic. He seems to have a big gash at the back of his head. Aye, Honorable we can excuse please him. don't disturb the house. Thank you. Thank you, sit. Continue, Honorable Chair. Thanks, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister, Honorable Chief Whip, Honorable Members of the House, uh, distinguished guests. It is with great sense of gratitude to have been afforded an opportunity to participate in this debate on behalf of the province of the Eastern Cape. The passenger rail transportation must speak to the economic linkages between the different economies. It is a fact that most of the workers stay far from the workplaces and that diminishes their disposable income due to transport costs. Safe passenger rail is still the most affordable mode of transport. It should create an environment to deal with spatial planning while advocating for such mode of transport. Therefore, it is important to underscore the importance of the link between the passenger rail with the existing mode of transport such as taxis. The rail infrastructure in the province of the Eastern Cape substantial consisting of 3,500 kilometers of Cape Gauge railway line and 300 kilometers of narrow gauge line between, but only 23% is in good condition. 37% already is being abandoned. The main line comprises the line between Port Elizabeth and No Port, and between East London and Petuli. These lines are also electrified with a more than 25 kV AC, that is an alternating system current. Commuter rail services are also poor, with the service between East London and Berlin carrying only 20,000 passengers per day, and the line which is between Jutnaik and Port Elizabeth service carrying only 5,000 passengers per day. Freight volumes carried by rail are not very substantial, with roughly 4 million tons of freight carried by rail in the province, of which the majority represents the manganese being transported to Port Elizabeth for export. The rail situation in the Eastern Cape province is evaluated against the global background, where successful commuter rail is represented by the fast, regular services with high capacity coaches and where successful freight rail is represented by high capacity trains that typically operate on standard gauge, which is roughly 0 0.5 meters wide than the Cape gauge used in South Africa. There are some developments which represent freight concentrations suitable for the rail in Port Elizabeth and in East London. The existing port in Port Elizabeth is adequately catered for the rail developments are underway to cater for the new port and related developments in Kuha. The East London port is currently undergoing an upgrade to accommodate larger ships and increase its volumes and is served adequately by rail for the limited freight that is currently being shipped. The poor commuter services in Buffalo City and in Nelson Mandela Bay are constraining the development of these cities and are losing ground to the PRT services and, and other forms of road-based public transport. The poor and abandoned branches lines do not represent any viable rail opportunities due to the limited freight volumes that are more suitable to road transport. The passenger and the freight rail connectivity between the three 
cities, that is Port Elizabeth and Buffalo City and Mtata, is poor even to non-existent. And it represents a, a reasonable long-term opportunity for a high-speed passenger service, which could include the freight. You will remember, honorable members, there was once a passenger rail between Mtata and the East London. But because of the situation, of it was too slow, and therefore people opted for other mode of transport. That's as the Eastern Cape we're advocating because there is still a need for that. And we're advocating that is for a, past, a faster and a, and a better one than the one which was used before that. Several rail-related projects that were have been identified, that is by the province. The two commuter rail services in Buffalo City and Nelson Mandela Bay should be improved to the standards that would serve the cities more appropriately to support the development of the two cities. These services operate on dedicated rail reserves and would only require upgrading of the rolling stock to modern coaches, which improved acceleration. In this way, the rail can operate on the more suitable high volume sections and fewer expensive trains will be required to provide a frequent regular services. All stations along these routes will need to be carefully developed as transport oriented developments that encourage the use of the services and provide income to ensure the higher quality security and service levels are retained. The existing defunct narrow gauge depot at Hermut in Port Elizabeth should be redeveloped as a transport oriented hub to serve the entire city of Port Elizabeth the airport and Port Elizabeth passengers terminal at the port. The narrow gauge Apple train should be retained as a tourist heritage train and some limited freight operations may be feasible, although this will, in all probability, fade away as the roll stock becomes defunct. All stations in the urban and rural reserves in the province should be assessed and some of them they should be retained. The high-speed passenger rail connecting Mtata, Buffalo City, and Nelson Mandela Bay has been identified and a long-term flagship project and all rail developments in the province should be viewed as the stage development of this service. These will include, for example, supporting improve, improvement of the existing rail between Port Elizabeth and Alistair to achieve a high-speed alignment and a greater extent a double track in a way of improved transnet freight rail operations and also provide for eventual development of flagship. Also, we think there can be a better line that can be developed between Port Elizabeth and, and Grahamstown, which that line, if it can have a fast speed train, it will assist the people who are moving between Port Elizabeth and, and Grahamstown because there's a serious need of that, especially in that particular area. Having looked at all these issues that we have raised above, we ought to, in the near future, take a bigger step to bring us closer to the fulfillment of the goals as we have, we have planned. The success to our developmental goals will, by one, will be one of our greater gifts to honor the life and the legacy of our, of our struggle icon, that is Tata Oliver Tambo, whom will be celebrating his life on the 27th of October in Kandolo. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Dimaza. And may I take opportunity to invite Honorable Kaula to address the House? Uh, Honorable Chairperson, the Honorable Minister, my brother, almost all well-developed and also the developing countries in the world have had to also incorporate world standard transport plans in their developmental plans. This is normally an integrated transport plan which focuses on introducing a safe passenger rail transport in order to help ease traffic congestion in the roads and thus minimize road accidents. South Africa records one of the highest road fatalities per year as compared to other countries in the world. This is one amongst the many reasons why the great need to build reliable and safe passenger rail transport. 
In 2016, 14,071 people died on the South African roads. This was an increase of 9% on the 2015 figure of 12,944 road fatalities in South Africa. Whilst passenger rail transport provides no guarantees that fatal accidents will not happen, it is however rated as one of the safest modes of transport around the world. In South Africa for the year 2015, two rail accidents were, were recorded. There was one train crash in Denver in April 2015, resulting to one death and 240 people injured. Two trains collided in Johannesburg in July 2015, resulting to about 100 people injured. In 2016, two trains collided in June in, De in Deben, resulting in 130 people injured. In 2017, trains collided in Pretoria, resulting to about 100 people injured. Thus far, for the past three years, only one death has been recorded in our rail accidents in South Africa. The question is, if South Africa has such a remarkable record of minimal rail accidents and minimal fatalities, why are South Africans so reluctant to maximize usage of rail transport instead of road usage? Here are some of the reasons, Honorable Minister. South Africa has the worst record of criminal elements and criminal activities in the trains. Just two days ago, passengers got attacked by criminals who boarded the train that had stopped at the red light. The train driver tried to intervene and got stabbed. He is in hospital as we speak. Our rail system is also not reliable in terms of time and not ideally convenient for daily commuters to and from work. Damage to rail infrastructure in the form of cable theft and other forms render the rail service totally unreliable. The train schedule in between the different cities of our country render the network inefficient for reliable usage. The types of co coaches used have not changed from much from apartheid era coaches which were designed to suppress human dignity of the, the then third class citizens. Graffiti and illegal advertising pasted all over the coaches of our trains render the rail environment so unfriendly and unwelcoming to use. The speed of our trains in between distant cities also makes it difficult for commuters to choose rail as a preferred mode, mode of transport. Prasa is the country's biggest headache and draw back in the non-improvability of our passenger rail network system. In 2011, the then estranged transport minister, Mr. Sbundebele, announced a 137 billion rand injection to modernize South African passenger rail infrastructure. Five years later, it is found that Prasa ordered locomotives that cannot be used in South African rail network. It took the ruling by the North Scouting High Court to stop the controversial deal from proceeding. Even the legal tender processes towards this deal had been short-circuited in order to award the tender to connections of certain people in government circles. Prasa has been recently involved in a, a public spat with the then acting CEO, Mr. Letswalo, over Letswalo's senseless demands to the board. Up to now, the minister has not been able to appoint a new board to Prasa, for Prasa. Under these circumstances, how can South Africa have any hope of, at all for reliable and efficient transport? In conclusion, the IFP message to the people of South Africa is that South Africa will be able to build a reliable and safe passenger rail transport on the day the ANC is voted out of power in this country. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Kaula and we'll proceed to invite the Honorable MEC of Transport, Safety and Security, Limpopo Mendalan. Thank you, Honorable Member. You may proceed. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister, Ndadejo Mashisongai, fellow NCOP delegates, and the audience in the gallery. Chairperson, Passenger rail transport forms the economic livelihood of our nation. Majority of our people in the rural and urban areas rely mainly on rail transport. This is because it is cheaper and affordable. Our rail transport relies on coal and electricity for its survival. Chairperson, it is against this background that there is a need for us as a country to make sure that our rail transport is safe and reliable. Firstly, for our rail passenger transport to be safe and secure, we must look at the technical aspect of our trains. Chairperson, our trains should be in good working conditions. 
our fellow technicians should at all times service our trains. Last week, the Minister of Transport, the Honorable Ndate Joe Maswangani, was launching the October Transport Month. We are pleased that, as the Minister has outlined, several projects aimed at improving the passenger rail transport. Chairperson, a study was done with regards to four identified projects in Limbobo. Bulukwani to Mkopane Commuter Service, Bulukwani to Gauteng, Mangwen, Bulukwani Sishiku Rail Passenger Transport, Bulukwani Muloto Corrido. The purpose of the study was to make sure that we have an improved and safe passenger rail transport. Chairperson, once more, the minister outlined during the launching of the transport month that trains will be built in Gauteng under Kurulen, a Kurulen metro. We must also bear in mind that the safe and reliable transport will also involve the human aspects. Such human aspects include the human resource. There is a need for us as a government to fully train and equip our drivers with new skills. We must make sure that we don't ex export the resources that we have. As previously indicated, an academy where we shall train drivers, artisans, and technicians should be a top priority. Chairperson, another safety measure, measure will be to strengthen our police, police visibility in trains. As for of now, we can call safely, say that our trains are daily becoming safer. Criminals should know the truth that their days are numbered. Chairperson, as a province, we shall assist the national government with all our resources available in order to make sure that our passengers' rail transport is safe and reliable. All of us should remember that Limpopo borders Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique through the Kruger Gate. This therefore means that the safer rail transport will also play a vital role in increasing our tourism market. Most of visitors will prefer to visit our country using trains. As I conclude, uh, Honorable Chairperson, it is now quite clear that there is a need for a new rail infrastructure. This will need business, businesses and government to come together. The success of the safer passenger rail transport will need the involvement of all stakeholders. I thank you, Kiale Woha. Thank you very much, Honorable MEC. And we will now uh, have an honor to request Honorable Dikhale uh, to address the House. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chief Whip, uh, Honorable Minister of Transport. I heard Honorable Kaola is calling you his brother. He is our son of the soil in Limpopo, Honorable Kaola. Honorable members and special delegates, ladies and gentlemen in the gallery, Honorable Chairperson, this day, 5 October, is World Teachers' Day also known as International Teachers Day. As a former teacher myself, I would therefore like to have your indulgence to teach a bit in relation to the topic of the debate at hand. My teaching will of course be related to my focus area of the debate, which is the Moloto Rail Corridor Project. As you might all know, this project is a direct response by government to excessive traffic congestion numerous fatal road accidents and general economic underdevelopment in the Moloto area. In September 2016, government managed to secure 30 billion rent, rents for the, con for the construction of the Moloto Rail Development Corridor and mayor construction work to renovate Moloto Road has begun. The upgrade has started with the construction of traffic circles of roundabouts in major intersections of Mpumalanga section of the road. 
This phase will also involve closing off of dangerous illegal uh, access, reducing conflict movement on surface roads, installing and replacing street lights, and moving informal traders to safer areas. The theme of our debate is building a reliable and safe passenger rail transport. The key words which are adjectives in this theme are reliable and safety. The concept of safety includes a nation of hazard. When we walk about safety, we are always talking about being safe from something. The type of safety in the case of railways relates to train operations being safe from collisions and derailments. The question, however, is how do we achieve this? Part of the answer is that we must adopt safety as a culture that is safety culture. This means that safety should manifest itself as a totality instilled, transmitted, and demonstrated throughout all organizational human work involved in the project. The concept of safety culture should be ingrained in the deepest unconscious aspects of all departments of PRASA as the agent that will be running this rail passenger program. It should be turned into a tangible concept and needs to touch every person within the organization and should influence the way in which people relate to one another. I am glad that this Molodo up upgrade, uh, Molodo road upgrade is being built with safety in mind and promises to reduce the countless accidents and death on this road. As I said, it has started with the construction of traffic circles or roundabouts in major intersections of Mpumalanga section of the road and dangerous illegal accesses are being closed off, reducing conflict movement on service roads as well as installing and replacing street lights and moving informal traders to safer areas. In the concept of safety is not given the attention and priority it deserves. Passenger rail transport will be viewed as a catalyst for economic depression, non-productivity and unemployment rather than a catalyst for economic development. This is so because when an accident occurs, the disruption disturbs the time as arrival of people, goods and services and impacts negatively on employment and economy. In addition to instill safety culture, PRASA needs to cultivate the safety climate, which is referred to as a situation where managers at all levels are highly committed to safety, where the workforce express satisfaction with an adherence to the organization's safety system, where everyone is risk averse, where there is no pressure towards maximizing profits and the expense of safety, and where operators as well as managers are highly qualified and competent. When we come to the notion of reliability, this refers to the extent to which an experiment, test, or measuring procedure yields the same results on repeated trails. This means that for PRASA to provide a high quality service in this Moloto rail corridor, it would be advisable to adopt a considerable degree of reliability as a user requirement where the safety levels are regularly measured. If PRASA were to accomplish these two notions, then it, could, it would have no difficulty in achieving the other purpose for which this project is aimed at, that economic development. Studies show that transport is a catalyst for providing equitable access to opportunities and services, and the majority of the working class who are uh, heavily relying on, on public transport. It, in economics, there is a branch called transport economics, and it deals with the allocation of resources within the transport sector. In the language of this transport economics, it is said roads carry the economy of the country. This means that the means of transport and roads must be accessible to all the people for them to be economically empowered. This project is designed to change the quality of the life of people in the area through, among others, promoting economic development and work opportunities and bringing to end long commuting distances from the work to work for the poor. It has been designed to unlock the Northern Mineral Belt within the Waterbeck area and will include the development of a logistic corridor to connect the three provinces of Gauteng, Mpumalanga and Limpopo. In addition to boosting the Waterbeck Mineral Belt, the project will also boost local economies along the Moloto route. The project has been identified as one of the country's 
18 strategic infrastructure projects and it's predicted that it will create about 12,500 jobs. This would be distributed as follows. 3,250 jobs in Pumalanga, 3,000 jobs in Limpopo, and 6,250 jobs in Gauteng. The rail services will comprise feeder services and distribution, which will be completed by 49 bus and taxi roads with 681 buses and taxi stops. The aim is also to reduce the relative number of people that will travel long distances for work and other purposes because this development will create an opportunity for a higher percentage of people that will find employment locally. The proposed rail service will provide 30 new train stations, 125 kilometers of double track, 38 roads over all rail bridges, nine pedestrian bridges with the potential for more, 44 river crossings, three staging yards in the corridor, 12 car train sets, 46 train set, capacity to transport 15,000 passengers per hour, one major multimodal interchange, and 160 kilometer per hour operational design. The small business will also benefit according to the revised procurement act, along with other government entities. Sunral has put aside 30% of the total project cost to create opportunities for small black owned business. Residents have been recruited and contractors and service providers have now been appointed for the first phase in Mpumalanga. A total of 160 community members have been recruited for the construction of four traffic circles between Moloto and Mutedi in the Tembi Silahani and Dr. S.J. Moroga local municipalities. I thought members would give me a round of applause on this one, but they are quiet. Honorable Chairperson, my teaching ends here and I hope the stakeholders involved in this project, especially Praza and the government at large, will heed the recommendations I've made, especially with regard to safety and reliability. I also hope that in light of the numbers that I have laid bare, hear all the, the pessimism with regard to this project with lay to rest. In my language, we say, okay. The doubting Thomases must just take a short left to the Moloto area where they will realize that the ANC-led government is hard at work to make the lives of our people better. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable House Chair. And thank you very much. And let me invite Honorable Lund to address the House. Thank you, Honorable Lund. Thank you, Honorable Chief Whip, Acting Chair. Honorable Minister, um, members and fellow South Africans, reliable and safe passenger rail transport for all, and together we move South Africa forward. I must say, one thing about this government, it is quite good at coming up with catchy slogans and themes. I mean, I can just imagine sitting in the ANC caucus, some members actually stop playing on their phones and looking up, uh, other members half asleep, actually sitting up listening, and the Eastern Cape members actually using chairs for what it's meant to, sitting up straight. The problem, Honorable Minister, comes in where the actual delivery on such slogans, when that, the problem comes in when the actual delivery on these slogans should take place. Without a doubt, the spatial development legacy of South Africa have left our towns our cities with millions of South Africans that needs to travel countless hours every day, every week, and every month. These are the challenges that the post-94 governments had to address, is still struggling to address, and must continue to do so. This debate is therefore not just about transport, but freedom and opportunity. PRASA has proven time and time again that they are not up to the challenge to address these these shortcomings and these challenges that we need to face. The question we should ask, why is the national ANC government doing the same thing over and over again? It fails continuously, yet they expect a different result. It is the very definition of insanity. It is not just the severe economic impact that ineffective, unsafe and unreliable passenger rail transport has on the economy, communities and individuals. Minister, by failing to provide what you so eloquently promise, you are squandering something much more valuable from South Africans. That is their time. 
It is time that is meant for loved ones, time meant to access job opportunities, and time meant to live life instead of being caught up in the rat race. It is now time that you allow privatization, or at the very least, give the budgets to the cities to ensure that in communities where the DA govern, we will ensure that there's proper transport and the people will have more time for the loved ones. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Lond. And let's invite Honorable Shawangu to address the house. Honorable Acting Chairperson, let me take this opportunity to greet the South Africans at large. And the ruling party. A developed country is in the place where the poor have cars. It's where the rich use public transportation, Gustavo once said. The reality of passenger rail transport in this country is that it is neither safe nor reliable, uh, Minister. And this is why the rich don't take the train, because they don't have to. Going to and from work on a train is something millions of South Africans have to do every day, including the ministers. In the last 10 years, the passenger train services and had, have deteriorated across South African metros and in towns like Bethlehem and Bloemfontein, where I come from. What has also happened in the last 10 years, the capture of the state-owned entities by the Gupta family, particularly Prasa and Transnet. During this time, close to 10 billion have uh, been stolen from Prasa by the Gupta and Zuma's family. This is money which should have been used to replace trains, buy new equipment, train staff, and update technology and system. None of this is happening because the ANC government has allowed the Gupta family to loot Prasa and Transnet. Cape Town alone, the number of passengers using Metro Rail has dropped by 50% since 2000, with a 400% increase in train cancellation over the last two years. While it is estimated that the failure of Metro Rail costs the country billions of rents a year, Workers in this country are getting fired by their bosses because they don't come to work on time. This is not reliable. Trains are so full that half the passengers are on the roof of hanging or, or hanging out the doors and windows of the trains. This is not safe. We cannot have a conversation about improving the safety and reliability the reliability of passenger rail transport in this country without talking about state capture. Because it is impossible to make rail transport reliable and safe in this country if the money which is meant to be used to do this continues to get stolen by Zuma and the Guptas. It is why we will continue to fight state on capture. Point of order, Honorable Member, may you take a seat? On what are you rising, Honorable Mtimuye? I'm, I'm rising on a point of order, Chair. The, the Honorable Member is making, is making a point, an allegation, and present it as if it was fact. And he says in his statement that President Zuma has stolen money, as if he's got proof to that. I want to place it on record, Chair. The president is not charged in any court of law and is not appearing in any court of law in this country as of now. So to say with total conviction that he has stolen money is actually 
Thank, thank you, thank you, honourable member. Uh, honourable members, uh, the point of order is sustained. Refrain, please, honourable members, speaking to make a statement of fact when there is never any investigation or a court of law on this bed. Can you proceed, Honorable Shabangu? Uh, I, I'm happy that the South Africans are listening that uh, Honorable Ntimunye is uh, protecting the president. Uh, uh, it, does, it is why we will continue to fight state capture. It does not mean that the only challenge to passengers rail transport in this country is state capture by the Gupta family, but it is the most immediate challenge. Because money which, is, uh, which should be going to Metro Rail is being taken out of the country to Dubai, where Zuma and Mugabe are going to retire after looting money belonging to Zupta Order. Can you and take your South seat, Africa. Member? Honorable Nita. So, Honorable Shawangu, you know that you are supposed to address the President of the Republic appropriately. The President of the country appropriately. May you do so. Whenever you raise the name, please understand that is a President. Thank you. Can you proceed? Until state capture ends, we cannot fight on uh, focus on building a reliable and safe punch passenger rail service in this country. Last but not least, let me take this opportunity to thank Medi Khale for being a reverie and a player at the same time. I have never seen this in my lifetime. Being the chairperson, the next time is on the speaker's list. This proves that uh, ANC has brought the dead woods. That is why I'm honoring you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Shabangu. But also you must appreciate that being part of this house also is a process of learning. This doesn't violate any rules in any way. Thank you. Uh, can I proceed to invite uh, Honorable uh, Grant, the MEC of Transport in the Western Cape? Thank you, MEC. Honorable House Chairperson, Honorable Members and Office Bearers, Delegates from the Provinces, Honorable Minister of Transport, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's a pleasure to represent the Western Cape Government today in the National Council of Provinces during this very important debate. I've listened intently to the range of contributions already made this afternoon, contributions which reflect many important aspects of commuter rail transport. When I spoke in this house earlier this year as part of the Minister's budget debate, I indicated our full support of his five core pillars underpinning the overall transport budget. It is appropriate today in this debate that I highlight once again three of these core pillars as follows. Firstly, transforming and improving the lives of our people. Secondly, continually improving transport safety and security. And thirdly, a strong commitment to quality public transport infrastructure and services. Against this background, Chairperson, I want to plead the case of hundreds of thousands of ordinary, hard-working residents of the Western Cape whose lives are impacted by the current clear absence of the quality and the improved safety and security which these three core pillars commit to. The passenger rail network in the Cape Town functional area is well located should provide an essential social and economic service and has the potential to make a major contribution to an efficient and sustainable urban future. The service is meant to provide a critical lifeline for the poor, 
providing affordable access to opportunities and services to those living in far-flung areas and helping to bridge the spatial divides that were so shamefully put in place during the apartheid era. Passenger rail has so much potential in Cape Town and the surrounding areas. Potential to provide affordable access to opportunities for all. Potential to support the reshaping of this major city through transit-orientated development. Potential to alleviate congestion by providing a real alternative to the private car. Potential to boost investor and tourism interest in Cape Town and the potential to improve the overall quality of life for so many of our population. It is this potential of rail that makes the current situation so tragic and unacceptable. As we are all aware, the passenger rail service in Cape Town is currently in crisis and is providing neither a safe nor reliable service. The most disadvantaged in our communities are forced to wake up very early to catch a train for fear of delays that they may lose their jobs. These same people must endure inhumane and severely overcrowded conditions with some hanging out of the train. If the train arrives on time, the risk of breakdown is a cause for anxiety given the recent aggravated decline in reliability. Passengers are also exposed to crime and personal danger. These are just some of the very real consequences of an unreliable and unsafe service for the people of the Western Cape. As we all know, one of the major issues affecting the rail service in Cape Town in recent years has been vandalism. This has had a devastating effect on Metrorail's capacity and the reliability of its services. For captive users, in other words, those who have no choice but to use the train for economic reasons, life has become that much harder. For cho choice users, those who can afford to use a private car or another mode of public transport, the train has become an increasingly unattractive alternative. The inability of Prasa to secure its network, coupled with the appalling low rate of arrests and prosecutions for arson and other attacks on trains, a de depressing byproduct of poor policing and limited effectiveness of the criminal justice system, has produced what is often nothing more than a crime scene on wheels. The impact on businesses and the broader economy is great, given the vast number of workers who rely on rail as their main mode of transport. In the last few years, we have witnessed declining reliability, deteriorating safety conditions, and increased incidence of vandalism and fewer available train sets, from 88 down to 60. At the same time, we are concerned by the broader organizational challenges being experienced by PRASA at a national level, including allegations of corruption and mismanagement from the public protector and others, the loss of technical skills and poor staff morale. We note the Honorable Minister's commitment to rail improvement through investments in rail infrastructure and rolling stock but are appalled at the extent to which these commitments are being hampered by allegations of massive fraud and managerial inefficiencies. My department has already provided ass to assistance to Metro Rail wherever possible, particularly in relation to security. The return in improved service for the more than 600,000 dependent commuters and the many more possible passengers has not been significant. We hear about orders placed for new train sets and we read about the potential impact of new technologies. Commuters dream of affordable, efficient, safe and reliable rail services. But Chairperson, we know that these will not be a reality today or even next week. As the Western Cape Government, we wish to see an improvement, 
much sooner a movement towards a good quality rail service that is meeting its potential and we want to work in partnership with the National Department of Transport, PRASA, Metro Rail, the City of Cape Town, the private sector and passengers to develop a workable solution to the current crisis. We simply have to improve the here and now situation. We have to give commuters something better as soon as possible. The Western Cape government and my department in particular will welcome with open arms any opportunity to make a contribution to turning around the service. From a safety and reliability perspective, this means we would like to see at the very least a service that business, workers, learners and the broader community can rely to be on time and provide sufficient capacity to meet demand, a demand which will grow rapidly, a service free from crime, a service that is affordable to those on low incomes, a secure network free from vandalism and fair evasion, infrastructure, rolling stock, stations and other elements of the network that fully meet safety standards, as well as the capacity and processes in place to ensure safe operations. As government, we cannot sit back and let our residents endure such hardship or let the enormous promise of rail fade. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MEC Grant. Uh, may I as well invite Honorable Ntebe to address the House. Uh, thank you, thank you, Honorable Chief, with the presiding chair. He, the minister rose to the occasion and said, connectivity and accessibility becomes and remains the key pillar of what the national uh, safety policy uh, would seek to achieve when presented by parliament. I think it's a, it's a critical issue for us to be able to do that. That minister is the ANC we represent affordable, accessible, and safety reliable rail transport system for our people so that we can be able to. And later on, I will unpack the, the relationship between safe and reliable rail transport system for our people and the economy. Honorable Kai also came and, and spoke eloquently about our endeavor to propel a developmental agenda through such rail infrastructure that we want to see happening. And we also acknowledge the, all the infrastructural gaps that are existing in between. He also spoke about commuter rail service that needs to be uh, kept to the bar so that we can be able to respond to the challenging needs of our own people. Quite critical, the chairperson of the select committee spoke about security and waste management system. I can, I can assume, and Honorable Minister, I used a train yesterday afternoon to go back home. When, when, when they talk about issues of safety, I can relate. Yesterday, Honorable Fab, yeah, yesterday, I used train back home. So the things that you are talking about here, I know them. On what point, Honorable, on what point are you rising, Honorable Member? I believe that the member of the podium is a veteran of this house, and I believe that he's well aware of the rules of this house, that he's not allowed to address another member directly, but he must address a member through the chairperson. Thank, Thank you very much for that point, uh, for the reminder. Can we allow the honorable member to proceed? Fair enough, I accept, Chair. Seemingly, there seems to be at least imparting of knowledge is working. Honorable Faber spoke about uh, 
the importance of, economy, of, of this rail infrastructure into the economy. I will come back to that uh, through you, Chair. Uh, also parting that with what Honorable Lont was saying. The issue of the, the need for, tr for integrated transport system as raised by Honorable Kaula, it's an important matter. It's something that we need to do urgently. It's something that we need to see working so that we can be able to stimulate the growth that we want to see in our economy. I think it's a good point that was being made. Honorable Charavangu messed the good debate. Came here and grandstand on personalized politics. Unfortunately, he's not in the house. The problem with personalized politics. Okay, at a point of order. Chair, I would, I would plead with you to plead with the member on the podium to stop being emotional. This is a debate, thank you. Well, the, okay, I will ask the honorable member to proceed. I do not sustain the point of order. You see, you see the problem with personalized politics, honorable chair, is that when that person that you're personalizing politics unto is no longer there, you are losing political mileage. You are no longer relevant. Because you've been targeting Ntebe, and Ntebe is no longer there. You're losing mileage. And this is the danger that we forever warn the EFF on. That if you want to speak, and that's why, Honorable Kony, that's why, let me refrain before the chair calls me to order. <laughs> honorable, honorable Chair, Honorable Lont and Honorable Faber argument quite explicitly is that there's a need for privatization, Minister. A call that I would stand up here and say we must reject with contempt. I would tell you why. They don't tell us that they are speaking on behalf of those who want to feed their opulence. They are not representing the majority of our own people who suffer on a daily basis on the trains. If you, if you are going to go on tender tomorrow, Honorable Minister, and say I'm advertising, I want this party to be privatized, it's not ordinary people, poor people who are going to be able to contest and win that tender successively. It is going to be those who are already rich, filthy rich, who are going to be feeding their opulence. This must be rejected. On that point, Honorable, Honorable Fava, Fava, there's a member standing on what, Honorable Fava? Why are you standing? Uh, chairperson, the honorable member, we're talking about privatization but, and about tenders going out. Is he perhaps talking about the Guptas um, with Prasa? Because definitely when we talk about privatization, it's not by getting tenders for the Guptas as happened with Prasa. The point of order is irrelevant. Let's allow the member to proceed. Let's take, for example, honorable chair through you, honorable father. A competition between Africa's two leading economies. 95% of the income of Nigeria comes from the, what we call the petrodiamond, the petrodollars. Dollars made out of the oil industry. 65% of the South African economy come from a variety of commodities. We want to acknowledge, we want to acknowledge that there's progress made in the big banking and the telecom sector in terms of what Nigeria. But we also know that their GDP rebasing has not been done since the 1990 until recently. Now, let me school you. Let me assist you. Let me assist you. Honorable members, please. Please allow the member to debate without any interruption. Can you proceed, Honorable Member? Honor, honorable Chair, as I proceed. But, but we also know that the agility and the rigidity of our manufacturing sector cannot be compared to any other economy in the, in the, in the continent. Let, there's, there's, a B, there's, there's an article that is giving you facts on that, and I can, I can give you facts right now at my disposal. You know, you know the, the World Bank conduct, conducted a study last year, March, and came to a conclusion that if you want to compare the two leading economies in Africa, 
Nigeria will be estimated around 296 billion US dollars. And South Africa will be sitting around 301 billion dollars. What does it mean? I'm going to give you a sporting analogy by BBC African Economist Chief Editor called Matt Davis. He says, and this is important for you to comprehend, and I quote through you, Chair. He says, in the whole, if Africa's leading economies competition was a horse race, the two leading contenders would be virtually neck on neck, but they wouldn't be galloping. They would be trotting at best, looking increasingly tired and desperately in need of sustenance, close quote. If you understand that, you would understand that the necessity to privatize state goods when you are seeking to have to propel your developmental agenda, it's a fallacy to grow your economy. Honorable Chair, a transformational agenda, and we want to thank Honorable Grant, who quite well spoken. You are saying the transformation of the lives of our people depends on the reliability of the rail transport. We want to agree, but you can't do that if you want to privatize. Let's agree. You can't do that. You can't transform the lives, transform the lives of our people if other people from your sector are saying, let's privatize. The very same private goods that seeks to develop our own people. So these are the issues that we must be able to be alive to and we must be able to say they are critical issues that have been raised. Issues of security, issues of safety management in the, in the trail infrastructure are issues. I can do an example. If you want to go to Houghton, which is hard hit, Honorable Makuya today, people are not hanging out of the train because they, can't, they don't want, they, the trains are full. They are hanging out of the trains because others they do not want to pay. It is not an issue that will be resolved by the minister. It's a societal issue. It's how we go out on public platforms in campaigning mode to ensure that our people understand that the safety and security of our own people depends also on us as deployed uh, deployees, but also on the generation that is coming before us so that we make sure that our people understand where we want to go. So these are the things that we want to correct. We will not correct them if we continue to throw stones. It is coming together that is going to allow us to solve these matters. These issues that have been raised, Honorable Chair, we think that the transformation of our own people, and it is not catchy slogans and themes that are directing us. It is programmatic implementation of the programs that we agree on and the policies that are going to be implemented through the leadership of the minister that are going to get us out of the quagmire we are in today. From where we are sitting, we want to thank the Eastern Cape. They're having a clear platform, a clear program of how they want to have a fast train system linking our people in the most peripheral part of our country. And we want to say, when you bring such goods to our own people, you begin to emancipate them. Chair, from our part, as the ANC, we know that the challenges are immense. We are equal to the task. We are sitting here, we are saying issues of security. When you know that you are going to be buying goods that have been taken from commuters in trains as a member, you are also contributing to the safety and security that is going down in trains. And these are the issues that we want to resolve. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Ntebe. And this leads us to invite the Honorable Minister to conclude the debate. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, and thank the members for the debate. The challenges in this uh, sector, Chairperson, uh, which all of us have to assist one another, is uh, theft of uh, cables. And you, you can't blame Brasa for that. No, you can't. Uh, the problem, as all members acknowledge, is vandalism. Because even now, when we are changing from uh, copper 
cables to optic uh, fiber. What the criminals do, because you can't re, uh, uh, sell or recycle uh, the fiber, they just destroy the fiber. I've experienced that when I went to, I went to Nansfield uh, Station and uh, New Canada Station in Johannesburg, where trains are delayed because of people vandalizing our optic uh, 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 fiber connectivity. The problem of crime, as uh, Honorable Ntebe has indicated, all of us have to assist one another to deal with this problem. It's not a PRASA problem. As he has said, it's a societal problem. We are working very closely with the Minister Mbalula Razmatas in this regard. If you go to our Tambo, for instance, we have put uh, a security plan. Uh, our Tambo is no longer the same. You remember there was a serious problem, people were followed home, and a whole range of problems. But if you go there now, you will see high visibility of uh, police and, of course, other uh, related uh, uh, security services. The problem of people who want to be free riders, who get into the train on top of the train and hang all over the train is a problem. Uh, our drivers, train drivers, are assaulted, uh, uh, as one member has actually alluded to. The trains, in particular here in the Western Cape, Honorable Grant, you know, they are banned uh, throughout. Uh, when people get frustrated, even sometimes as a result of service protest, people result to, resort to banning trains. And it's a problem that all of us have to resolve. Uh, the apartheid government, you know very well, Honorable Grant, if you study the De Villiers Commission, decided to no longer invest in the rail sector. It's there. And the apartheid government was run by National Party and the Democratic Party, which today is the DP, honorable, I mean, uh, DA, Honorable Faber. Um, yes. So you decided deliberately not to invest in the rail sector. And that's the problem that we have today. I am very reluctant, uh, sorry, Honorable Minister, I'm very reluctant to allow you to say anything because you have almost said what you wanted to say, is it that? My minutes be served, please. Oh, please do not do that, Honorable Member. Yes, on what point are you rising? The minister is leading the house by saying that the DP and the NP went together because I can tell you now that as far as I understand, after that was a coalition, but after that, the National Party joined the ANC. You are now entering the debate. <laughs> That's a point of debate. Let's allow the minister to proceed with the debate. Let's allow the minister to lead, proceed with the debate. Thank you, members. Okay. Thank you, members. Okay, thank you very much. Let's allow the minister to proceed with the debate. Proceed, oh, please. Th th thank you, uh, Chairperson. Proceed, minister. Thank you very we, much. We are not going to privatize the uh, metro rail because the train is one of the cheapest modes of transport in this country. The moment you, met, you privatize it, it will become very expensive and not accessible to poor people who come from township and villages. Let's set the record straight, Chairperson. We don't have Gupta tenders in, uh, in Prasa. I know everything yes. about Gupta. Let, 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 let somebody come and say, this is a tender by the Guptas. Yeah, no. The public protector conducted an investigation. There's no Gupta there. There's no President Mugabe who want to get money from Prasa and retire in Dubai. No. Don't make a full of statements and insult the heads of state of other countries. It's, it's not on record uh, that any tender has been given. To, it's just that Shawangu is not here. But just to come and make uh, statements which are not factual is not correct. We don't have Guptas in Prasa. Of course, we are going to appoint the board in Prasa at the end of uh, uh, this month, Chairperson. So points have to be uh, 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 outline there, and we make uh, 
a meaningful contribution. The Western Cape is one of the biggest beneficiaries of a Metro Rail chairperson. In the new project, Metro Rail here is going to invest not less than 8.4 billion to Western Cape alone in terms of the new project. So I don't know what they are talking about when they say we are not investing here. It's not factual. In terms of the Blue Downs network extension, we are going to spend 3.5 billion, which is the construction, which is going to reduce travel time between uh, Belleville, uh, the metro uh, in town, as well as uh, the southeast. Linking the airport, we are going to spend 2.5 billion uh, in that uh, uh, project. Uh, the Philippi station modernization is at 79% completion. The signaling program in the Western Cape are going to spend 2.5 billion to modify the remote uh, control system and reduce the uh, signaling failures. So for Helen Zille to say she wants to come with a bill on rail, it's just hot air. She must resolve her own problems with uh, uh, Patricia Delille, Smith and others and deal with their problems and provide housing to our poor people here. She should not get involved in a project that she won't even have a cent to budget for. So, Honorable Grant, let's work together, as you have said, to make sure that we provide better services in the Western Cape. Tell your Premier, because yourself, you know very well, you are a businessman, you can do uh, 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 costing, that what she's talking about uh, is neither here nor there. We are spending money on a, a refurbishment of existing fleet, whereby uh, metro coaches, we are going to spend 1.36 billion on a refurbishment. We are working together with uh, Transnet in this regard. We have got a program on depot modernization to support uh, train operations in Gauteng, Western Cape, uh, Deben. In the MTF, we are going to spend 2 billion in this regard. On the signaling uh, renewal project, the construction in Gauteng is going to be 5.4 billion to spend on signaling. But as I've said, Chairperson, we've got a problem of uh, theft, vandalism. It's just that uh, my friend uh, uh, has left here, Kaula. We are going to spend uh, 2, 2 billion rand in KwaZulu Natal on a signaling renewal. Uh, project. We have a program to uh, replace rails, uh, turnouts, slippers, and also ballast screening. This is a lot of money that we are spending. In terms of uh, station modernization, Chairperson, we are going to improve on the PA systems, uh, CCTV, walkaways, uh, automatic uh, ticketing system. When I was in Nansfield, we had spent not less than 12 million to modernize that station. The following day, we opened it. Everything was vandalized in that station. On the new locomotive, Chairperson, for the first time, unlike during apartheid, we are going to build or manufacture 580 new trains, which we are going to deploy in the Western Cape, Gauteng, KZN, Eastern Cape. Already 20 of those, 20 of those trains, President Zuma unveiled them in July this year. We are busy, honorable member, delivering uh, those trains. You can go to Danota in Niger. We are not talking fiction, unlike uh, honorable Shabangu has left uh, by being fictitious. They are there. The construction uh, will be starting. The time frame is there. We are starting with the new train at the end of this year or early next year. In the Eastern Cape, we are going to spend the 2 billion rand in Motherwell in Port Elizabeth to make sure that 20,000 daily passengers are transported, Honorable Chairperson. So this is all what we are doing. We are putting wall constructions in hot spots where there are problems, more especially here in the Western Cape. So let's work together for the better life of our people and uh, stop uh, grandstanding, Chairperson. Thanks very much. Uh, 
Thank you very much, uh, Minister, for leading this debate. MECs present here, special delegates and honorable members. We conclude this important debate on reliable and safe passenger rail transport. Building a reliable and safe passenger rail transport remains key. So it's our view that transport remains the heartbeat of South Africa's economy. We want to thank members that have participated in this debate for their contributions. And I want to remind members that the immediately after the House adjourned, members should remain here in the chamber for a quick rundown about the provincial week next week of the National Council of Provinces. All of us delegates will be back in our provinces. The House stands adjourned, the procession will leave the House. Thank you, members.